In this video, I want to share with you how you can use the rule of thirds like a professional photojournalist. The rule of thirds isn't just about making pretty pictures. If you use these five tips, you can learn how to make impactful photos that tell stories. Hi, my name is Sean Gallagher. I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker. If you're new to my channel, welcome. For the past 20 years, I've been working for clients including National Geographic, The Guardian, and the Pulitzer Center. Here on my channel, I want to share that knowledge that I've gained over my career with you so that you can improve your photography and elevate your images. In this video, I'm gonna be covering one of the most basic and fundamental principles of photography, the rule of thirds. It's a principle that I'm sure you've already heard of, but what I want to discuss in this video is how even professional photographers and photojournalists use this basic principle to make images with impact that tell stories. I'm gonna delve into my archive to find examples of how I've used the rule of thirds on my assignments. And I'm gonna share with you some of the secrets and tips to effectively using this principle to make images that have impact and tell a story. The rule of thirds is an artistic principle that dates back hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's based on the principle that if you divide your frame into thirds, simply by drawing four lines across it, you can create a simple framework by which you can create a pleasing composition for your viewer. Now, when we apply this to taking photos, it gives us a really useful guide about how we can not only compose our photo, but also use the rule to draw our viewer's attention to certain things that we want them to see within the photo. Let's start with one of the most effective ways to do this, and that's by using the intersections created when using the rule of thirds. In this image, you can see that the main focus of the photograph is the couple running down this huge sand dune in northern China. They've been captured in a position that falls exactly on the bottom right intersection. In this image, a man pushes his boat across a polluted section of the Ganges River in India. You can see that by framing him on the top right intersection, it gives space in the rest of the frame, which adds information and context to the story. This well-tested framing technique is useful for photojournalistic work because it often allows us to be able to draw the attention of the viewer. It's not just about the main subject in the intersection, but also about how it balances with the other elements in the frame and helps tell the story. So think about how you use the intersections as a way to focus your viewer's attention on the main subject matter. It's not just about creating a pretty picture. You're using the intersections and your focus on the main subject matter in balance with the other things within the frame ultimately to tell more of a better and deeper story about the issue that you're photographing. Once you've got familiar and comfortable with using one intersection to focus your viewer's attention on your main subject matter, then you can think about using the opposite intersection too. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, the main reason is to create more interest in your image. By using two points of interest on two different intersections, you can start to create more interesting dynamics in your picture that provide more interest for your viewer. But there's also storytelling potential there, as adding two points of interest on those two different intersections creates a relationship between different elements, and it adds drama, sometimes tension, and overall it makes for a more interesting photo and adds more to the story that you're trying to tell. In this image taken in Mongolia, the dynamic is created by the relationship between the two horses in the frame. Using the rule of thirds here with the two horses on the two intersections creates a dynamic connection and balance between them. The same principle applies here 
as two boys cross a flooded area in Jakarta, Indonesia. It's about the dynamic in the photo created by the two intersections and what is happening at those two points. When making images, be aware of what's happening in the whole frame. Don't get too focused on just one point or one intersection, as you may miss opportunities to make a stronger image. Try to connect the action in the foreground and the background of a photo by using the intersecting lines as a guide. By using two points of interest at the different intersections, you're immediately creating a more interesting and dynamic photograph. Think about the relationship between the different subjects that you choose to place on those intersections. How you use these intersections can create different dynamics, different feelings, and ultimately tell a deeper story about the issue that you're photographing. The rule of thirds isn't just about using those intersections. It also provides us with a really useful guide about how we can use horizons, both where to place them, but also how they can assist us in effective storytelling throughout the rest of the photograph. The top line created by the rule of thirds provides a very useful guide to where you should position your horizon. Placing your horizon here creates a very natural balance for the rest of the frame. Conversely, you can also experiment with putting the horizon on the bottom line, as this again creates a natural balance in the rest of the frame. But again, make sure that you have some interest in the other part of the frame. This is crucial to ensuring the whole frame is of interest to the viewer. So if you're not sure what to do with your horizons or where to place them in the frame, then use the rule of thirds as a simple guide to where to position them. So either that top line or the bottom line both work when you're using the rule of thirds, but whichever one you use, make sure to pay attention to the content in the rest of the frame so that A, it balances things out, and B, it provides some kind of context to the story that you're photographing and adds interest for your viewer. As well as using the lines at the top and the bottom of the frame when we're thinking about the rule of thirds, we can equally use the lines created to the left and the right when we're composing our frames. With these lines, they're typically used to offset your main subject matter to either the left or the right of the frame. And we do this to provide a little bit of extra breathing room to your main subject matter. And it also allows you to play with some of the elements within the other parts of the frame to provide a more interesting composition for your viewer. In this image taken in India, you can see that I offset the woman to the right in this composition. The strong, warm lighting created by the candles is offset and balanced with the dark, negative space to the left of the frame. As these men unloaded goods from a ship in the port of Jakarta, I offset them to the right to give a sense of their surroundings and play with the strong shapes created by the shipping yard around them. Offsetting allows you to create balance and space in an image, but you need to pay attention to what is in the opposite space in the frame and make sure that you balance all the elements together. If there are no other elements in the rest of the frame, you can just offset the main subject and balance it with a negative space for a more interesting composition. Offsetting your main subject matter to either the left or the right of the frame using the rule of thirds is a very simple way to create a more interesting composition. But the key is to pay special attention to what other elements are in the opposite side of the frame. If you have extra elements, make sure that they complement with your main subject matter. And if you're just using negative space, then use that to help provide a balance that contrasts to your main subject matter and provides a more pleasing photograph for your viewer. As with many of the other quote unquote rules of photography, it's important to learn and understand them, but it's equally important to sometimes go out there and break them too. Experimentation is key to finding new and interesting ways to make photographs. And sometimes when I go out taking photographs, some of my best photographs don't follow the rule of thirds, and that's okay. 
If an element in the frame doesn't fall exactly on an intersection, then don't throw away a good image just based on that one detail. If a horizon doesn't fall exactly on one of the top or bottom lines, it doesn't mean that you have automatically made a bad image. And if your offsetting doesn't seem to work and you think an image would look better with a different composition, then just go ahead with what you feel is right. In some situations, you may feel that the rule of thirds perfectly helps you capture that image and really effectively helps tell that story that you want to communicate to your viewer. But other times you may feel that you need to break the rule in order to create a new and interesting image, and that's okay. The main thing is that you focus on creating images that have impact and tell the story of what you're trying to cover. If you're a beginner photographer, you may be thinking a lot about how to use the rule of thirds when you're out taking photographs, but that will change over time. The more that you practice it, the more the technique will become instinctual, and eventually you won't even really think about it, you'll just be doing it automatically, just like the professionals do. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to invite you to share your images and join my communities. I have one on WhatsApp, and I have one on WeChat. And within these communities, members share their images with each other to get constructive feedback in order to improve their photography. To join the groups, all you need to do is visit my website, download my ebook, The Camera Doesn't Matter. And at the end of the book, there are QR codes which you can scan to connect with me and I will add you to the communities. On my website, you can also learn about the personalized one-on-one -on -one photography tutoring that I offer to my community members, if you're ready to take your photography to the next level. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.